Welcome to another unboxing video from theplayersaid.com. My name is Grant. Today I am unboxing the newest addition to the Valiant Defense Series. You can see the series name written here on the bottom right side of the box, the front. Uh, this game is a solitaire game. <clears throat> you can also play it cooperatively. I, cooperatively, I think we, Alexander and I, have played several of these together but they're intended generally as a solo game. So this game is called Lanzareth Ridge. That the subtitle is Battle of the Bulge. So this is a small part of the Battle of the Bulge and tells the story. Let's go ahead and flip it over so that I don't butcher uh, the history of it. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the back of the box up. The Battle of Lanzareth Ridge was fought December 16th, 1944 the first day of the Battle of, of the Bulge near the village of Lanzareth, Belgium, along a key route for the German advance. The American defenders consisted of 18 men from the 394th Infantry Regiment's Intelligence and Reconnaissance Platoon and four forward artillery observers. Uh, so you can see this was not a, a, a main battle force. This was a recon unit. Um, that happened to get caught up and caught in this area as the Germans advanced uh, on Battle of the Bulge. You'll also notice I've got my trusty reading glasses. Sometimes the close-up text as I get older is getting harder and harder to read. Uh, so I may be putting those on and taking them off uh, from time to time. Wanted to also show you, look at the art, and we'll look at the components as we get into the box. Uh, th this art is just amazing, done by Nils Johansson. We first came into contact with him through playing <clears throat> a series of games from High Flying Dice Games, uh, Battles of the Old Northwest Territory. Really great series of games, but you can see, sorry, I hit the camera. He has a really great talent for graphic design and layout, as well as you can see uh, the detail on the soldiers is just amazing. So this is designed by David Thompson, there you can see at the bottom, and Nils Johansson. And, and as you might imagine, David seems to simply be a machine. I, I, I love David. Uh, he puts a lot of work and effort into these games. But man, he, he was that another David Thompson game just announced? I, I just think I heard someone mention it. Sorry, that was a joke. But really, he, he puts a lot of games out. We've played dozens of his games already it seems and he always has something else in the hopper and a good game in the hopper we just played sniper elite uh he just had the new undaunted uh, come out about six months ago this game i know he's got several other games undaunted stalingrad in the works so really appreciate david and his approach really like his style i think these games are literally fantastic this is the fourth volume. I love them all, play them all, still own them all, and will keep them in my uh, my collection. So let's go ahead and bust open this box. I, I failed to mention this is from Dan Verson Games. We all know DVG. They make great games, great solitaire games uh, that we have all enjoyed and love. So here is a look at the, this is called the, uh, no, this is the rule book, sorry, the companion book. I'm going to go ahead and show you that first. I thought that was on top, I apologize. Uh, glossy paper, you can see that this is the companion book. So really what this is, is a description of the actual battle itself. You can see there's a, an actual picture of the battlefield with some numbers identifying different spots. Here's some of that information here. Here's another like kind of an oblong view of that battlefield. You can see that David has done a lot of research. Uh, he talks about that in this uh, companion book. Very fascinating. I'm going to sit down and I'm going to read through this. I, I want to get it to the table immediately because I have not played this one. But I'm going to go ahead and sit down and read this. This is probably going to take me about an hour, hour and a half to read. You can see it's 30-some pages. Um, but really appreciate this level of historical detail and additional work because once again one of the reasons i play these games is because i love history so that's a look at the companion book i believe that was a either a kickstarter goal when they did this or it was an additional buy 
Uh, this game was provided by Danvers and Games, uh, free of cost, uh, free of charge to us. Uh, but here's the rule book. Once again, glossy paper. The rule book is da -da -da -da, 33 pages. And if you are familiar with David State's, uh, David's, I'm sorry, Valiant Defense series, you're going to be fairly familiar with this, although it does add some new wrinkles, add some new elements, some different machinery and equipment. I think you actually have Jeeps uh, in this one. Uh, and there's just some just from some different uh, elements. I think it does track ammo in some regards, or at least for the 50 caliber machine guns. The MG, uh, no, those are the MG42s for the Germans, sorry. Uh, you are playing as the Americans against the attacking Germans. And the, the game uses a deck of cards. We'll look at those. Uh, it is called the Assault uh, Deck. And you're going to go through that, drawing a certain number of those cards each round. But you can see great, great art, beautiful layout. Rules just look fantastic. Uh, and, and here's kind of a look at the dice and the counters and the different... I mean, look at those soldier counters. A very big improvement, I think, over the ones in the other editions. Not that they were bad. These just bring a whole nother level uh, to the game. I know David was excited to work uh, with Nils. So there is the, uh, the rule book. So the first thing we're going to look at here is the actual map. It's a hard mounted map board. Uh, and it's a, it's a nice, good size board as well. Uh, a little smaller than some of the other uh, ones in the series, I feel. No, no, it's actually about the same size. There, I've got it upside down. But it's absolutely breathtaking. Breathtakingly beautiful, I would say. I guess that's the way I would describe it. I think I've got most of the map there in the shot uh, for you to see. And I'll pull it up here closely uh, to show you different parts. But look at the detail. Look at the trees and the relief. Uh, you know, the roads, you've got the fence lines there, you've got the various positions here, these circles with numbers and different colors. Those are where the enemy troops are going to approach the defenders in these various positions, and you're going to have to take them out, stop them using small arms. I think you have some grenades and, and other things. So, so you can see really great great looking map really well done bravo I, I even really like the way the tracks are incorporated there at the top i'm going to go ahead and probably hold it like this but there you can see that's where you're going to track some of the ammo for the m1919 machine gun i said 50 caliber uh, there's the m2 you're going to track the ammo there and over here you've got an m1918 so really well done, just a gorgeous map. And that's gonna make playing the game that much more thematic, that much more engaging, that much more interesting. I'll always play a good looking game over a game that uh, doesn't look good. Now, frankly, a, a good looking game is only as good as the gameplay. Let's put it that way. Here are uh, some player aids. There are four of them, nice uh, thick card stock. They're not double sided. So as a solitaire player, you're gonna be able to lay these out around the board so that you can refer to them fairly quickly. But they have different things, like some of the counters have attributes, and you're gonna you're gonna to need to know where to find the inspire attribute, page 21 of the rule book. Here's some kind of hence rules to remember about defender combat positions, counter limits. You can only have a couple a couple of four defenders in one area. Uh, talk here about morale. You can see the page number, damaged vehicles, range defense bonus, and it goes on and on. Here is the uh, the different actions that the players can take. Is that the same? Nope, they're not. It's just it's a it's a kind of two sheets, two sheets like that. But it lists all the actions that you can do: deny, dismount, weapon, and place weapon, move, radio artillery, radio intelligence, recover. Uh, it, it, it's all here. It's all listed. So you're going to be able to very quickly refer to these player aids and then refer back to, once again, page 16 in the rule book. Great designs, particularly for solitaire games. And then here's how the attacker phase is going to work. The German cards, 
how the assault, page nine, how the MG42s work, page 13, and the mortars on page 14. So very good player raids. Key to a good game is, is being able to make it playable is to have great uh, player aids. So here are the counters. I've already shown you some of the look uh, at these counters. These are ammunition uh, counters. These are probably your actions. I, I'm not exactly sure. Once again, I have not played this. Also have not looked at in depth at the rule book. These are the attacking counters. These are the defenders. These are actual historical names of those who defended this location during this time. You can see the ammo really, or I'm sorry, the, the guns. So you're going to, you're going to pop that out. Looks really good. There's a kind of a, a dismounted side. Um, not as many counters as I thought this game would have, but that's okay. Uh, re really nice looking counters. The ones that they do have. Here's a, a, another row of the disrupted counters. These are when units are going to be hit by enemy fire. You're going to get a disrupted marker. You're unable to act until you take those disrupted markers off. In the other games in the series, if you had two of them, your guys died. So that might be the case here. More ammo counters here. I just had a German uh, assault counter pop out, and I'll go ahead and show you that. Got to turn it up. This is a rifleman. So it looks really great. They, have, they are double-sided. There's no uh, reduced side or anything like that. But you can see these are German riflemen. And then once again, you have more of those, uh, those defenders down there at the bottom. Here's just some additional counters. You've got some grenades. Here's some barbed wire markers. I know there's certain locations where there's fences in this area. I don't know if these are reconnaissance or communication markers. Here you have some additional submachine gun units that have a little higher attack value than those riflemen. And then uh, you do have some medics. I do know one of the stories behind this battle was that the Germans, as their men got wounded, I believe, they sent up medics. And I'm doing quotations. Medics. They sent some medics up, dressed up as medics with crosses and et cetera, et cetera thinking that the Allies would not fire upon them and it would get them an advantage and get them closer to them. I think that foiled or was foiled by uh, by the defenders, but uh, just one of the attempted things that the Germans tried. There's some look at the German machine gun emplacements, a couple more of the defenders, and then here's a radio on a Jeep. Uh, that's a big part of the game. Uh, the game has a ton of dice. Here there are 12-sided dice. You can see there are 10-sided dice and several six-sided dice. Really nice quality, black, all black die. Uh, dice really look good. I think that's a, a nice touch. And then here's a whole bunch of wood that can act as these same markers here if you don't want to use these. So for instance, the orange ones are the disrupt. The brown ones are the ammunition. Uh, the gray ones would be something. Uh, so, so you can use these. I've never used these. I really like the way the counters look and feel on the map. But that's an option. And I think options are always good. There are two decks of cards included. Uh, probably, I'm trying to look. Let me, let me see on the back of the box. Uh, three counter sheets, yes. 12 dice, yes. 155 cards is what it says. Four reference sheets we already talked about, 33 by 17 mounted map, and then the rule book as well as the, um, whatever that, the companion book. So here I'm trying to open these. So while I, while I try desperately to open the assault deck here, I want to keep talking to you about these games. This game's going to play in about an hour or so, and it's, it's very light. Uh, you can set it up fairly quickly, tear it down fairly quickly. Play it, then reset it up. Uh, play it a couple of times in a couple of hours. That has been my experience with the system. So you can see this says attackers, and you'll notice there's a number there, that number three. Here is attackers number two, and then here's attackers number one. So there are three different parts to the assault deck or the attackers deck, and you're going to put that deck together First, you're going to go through the one cards, then you're going to go through the two cards, then you're going to go through the three cards, and in order to win, you have to get uh, through all of those. 
So let's go ahead and look at some of these. So these are going to be the one cards that I flipped over. You can see it says assault. It says place a unit. So you're going to place a false Jaeger unit. Uh, and those are, and it's a leader. You can see here. <laughs> so when this card is drawn, you're going to place a, a, a guy on the board. Same here. You're going to place, actually, does that say two? So that says two. You're going to place two units on the board. Typically, the way placement works is you're going to roll dice, and then you're going to refer to these numbers on these different tracks on the board. So if you roll a six, uh, or, or I'm sorry, whatever the number, usually these tracks, they look like they're A, B, and C. I should have done a little more prep, but you're going to roll, and it's going to tell you which track to put them on, uh, and then you're going to start putting them here in the farthest away spaces, and they're going to fill up and press in on the... Uh, on the allies so uh, roll in place you're gonna you know place a couple more units I don't know if that's a weapon uh, not sure here here you can see they're trying to cut the wire really great art uh, but you're literally gonna go through these and then here this is a little different card this isn't a unit card this is a card where you're gonna place out one of those mg42 markers and it's also going to act or activate. So you're going to place them, then you're going to activate them, and they'll roll and they'll do a certain, they'll kill units or they'll disrupt units. Here's a mortar team. There's a couple of those. More assault cards. As they get harder and harder in the three deck, you can notice they're going to put out two every time, three units, four units, good gracious, five units. I mean, it's just... And maybe I'm wrong, the number of units, maybe that's the locations. So anyway, they get harder and harder, and you're going to have to play through this and, uh, and survive. So that's a look at the uh, assault deck or the attacker's deck. I'm going to go ahead and open the other deck of cards. is partially the assault deck, but it also in, uh, entails or contains the uh, tactics cards. So you'll notice here it says Tactics, and it says Tactics 4. There's a Tactics 3. I don't know if there's different levels, but what these Tactics cards are, and then there's Objective cards as well. So that's kind of a new wrinkle to this game. But let me, let me flip these Tactics cards over just to, to show you a little bit. Uh, alert. So you're going to have a certain amount of these established. You're going to build a deck. And then these tactics basically add additional elements or rules or actions or events that are going to happen. You'll notice this first one says alert. Ignore grenade tokens. Assault counters move through them without effect. Do not discard the great grenade tokens. So that's going to come out and that turn those grenades aren't going to work. This one says assault. After resolving your grenadier card, place a second grenadier counter in the same location as the first and then advance the counters as normal. So you can see these just make it harder. So you're going to add these in to make the game more and more challenging as you figure it out, as you better learn the rules and the tactics and the strategies, you're going to want to add those because they add an additional level of difficulty. So it's kind of a self-customized range of difficulty and I think that's very cool. So there are these three objective cards. Uh, I, I think to win the game, I think you need to, to accomplish these, or these give you VP. You can see they have a VP amount. This one's 0, 2, and 3. So these are going to be up, um, and you're going to have to accomplish something to get those done. Once you get them, you can get additional victory points. Why, why do you need victory points? Well, at the end of the game, you're going to kind of add up all your points, and you're going to decide whether you won or had a great victory, a minor victory, or a defeat. Uh, here's just more uh, assault, and these actually have four on them, so maybe there are four parts to the deck. I said three, but it looks like maybe there are four. So there you go, guys. Uh, guys and gals, sorry. There is a look, I'm going to put that here. There is a look at Lanzareth Ridge Battle of the Bulge from Dan Versen Games. This is the brand new, fresh off the press, off the Kickstarter copy. I uh, really appreciate Dan Versen Games sending this to me. I'm going to play this uh, half a dozen times solo. Obviously, it's a solo game. 
I'll then work on a review video as well as potentially a playthrough video. And then as always, I might write something on it, either a first impressions written post or some action points that give you some hint and look into how mechanics work uh, and even talk a little bit about uh, strategy and tactics in how to beat the game. So there you go. Beautiful game. Volume 4 in the Valiant Defense series. And if you don't know what the Valiant Defense series is, game number one was Pavlov's house. Uh, the Soviets are holding the Russians off in Stalingrad in the fortified apartment building of, of Pavlov's house, named after Yakov Pavlov. Uh, that's the first game. Really love that game. In fact, I think that game has a special place in my heart. The second volume in that series is Castle Itter which is the last battle and one of the strangest battles of World War II. Um, not one of the last battles, but near the end of World War II. Really an odd situation where some Americans were holed up in a castle with some French diplomats, a, a pro tennis player, and, and I think some Hungarian and even German troops on their side fighting against the SS as they were attacking. Similar to kind of game you're holding out Volume 3 was Soldiers in Postman's Uniforms, a look at the 1939 city of Danzig um, assault by the Germans on the Polish po Post Office Number 1. That's a very cool game, similar to this system, but it adds, adds a lot of elements. It adds a 3D element to it, meaning you've got levels of the building and you have to worry about the different levels and where you can shoot and how you can shoot, that kind of thing. Very cool. Um, so those are the three volumes. This is volume number four. Now, I believe that a fifth volume is soon to be announced. Uh, I won't spill anything. I know the topic. I will say this, that it's focused on World War II. Very excited about it. It will be a new designer, not David Thompson. I'm a little sad about it, but I think this designer has done a good job. I've seen some information, and I think he's uh, going to get this to the finish line, and, and I'm sure we'll be backing uh, that on Kickstarter here in the next six uh, months to a year. So thanks for watching. I've been Grant for the Player's Aid. Please look for more content on this game over the next several months. Uh, thanks for watching.